Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The Kansas City streetcar installation continued this week with the delivery of the electrical substation that will power the streetcar system. The substations will convert the electricity to direct current that then travels through the underground wires to the power poles that line the route and then up the pole to the wires which then transfer the power to the streetcar vehicles themselves. Each massive substation is 30 by 40 feet and 12 feet tall and weighs nearly 30 tons. Each carries 750 volts of direct current. The streetcars are on track to arrive this fall and the line should start carrying passengers next spring. Kansas City loves baseball and our city has a rich baseball history. So in an effort to strengthen youth, families and communities, the mayor has joined Playball.org, an initiative of Major League Baseball to encourage kids to play baseball and have fun. The mayor, along with Royals greats like Dennis Leonard, John Mayberry, Brian McRae and Willie Wilson ran kids through baseball drills at the Playball event. It took place in the park adjacent to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. For more information, visit playball.org. Spay Neuter Kansas City will host a special $13 vaccination clinic in honor of their 13th anniversary on September 13th. The clinic will be held at the Westside Can Center at 2130 Jefferson from 10 a.m. through 2 p.m. The special $13 rate includes a rabies shot, microchip, and pet license. A puppy package is also available. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. September is a great time to be outdoors, and KC Parks offers lots of activities from which to choose. Join local officials for the dedication of a new 1% for Art project at the Firefighters Fountain and Memorial Panel dedication on Friday, September 11th at 3 p.m. in Penn Valley Park. The art project consists of two large walls with a double row of perforated aluminum panels mounted on limestone. Solid aluminum plaques are etched with the names of fallen Kansas City Fire Department firefighters. Dance in the Park, a partnership with City in Motion Dance Theater, takes place in Roanoke Park on Saturday, September 12th at 6.30 p.m. The event begins with a free dance class and then showcases a variety of dance genres which include ballet, jazz, tap, hip-hop, swing, tango, salsa, and more. The event is free and open to the public. View artists at work in plein air along the banks of Brush Creek during the fourth annual Brush Creek Art Walk, September 18th through 20th. Stroll the creekside walkways from the plaza eastward and enjoy artists painting landscapes and cityscapes for a juried competition and exhibit. For a schedule of quick paint contests and the exhibit opening, visit caseyparks.org. Is your family up for an adventure? If so, make plans to camp out Friday night, September 18th in Swope Park. KC Parks will supply basic camping equipment and organize hikes, food, music, archery, canoeing, fishing, and more. The program, called Wonders of Outdoor Wildlife, is $30 per family and has limited registration. Details are at wondersofwildlife.org or call 816-784-5200. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org and click on the calendar or give us a call at 816-513-7500. We are standing near the Singleton Yard Vehicle Maintenance Facility. Uh, just behind me is the Broadway Bridge, and we are eagerly awaiting arrival of the first of four power substations for the KC Streetcar Line. Uh, once arrived, it's going to pull in right over to my right, back in near that red crane behind us, and be lifted to its place under the Heart of America Bridge. So this substation has a footprint of 30 feet by 14 feet, and it's about 12 foot tall, uh, weighing in at 57,000 pounds. 
So we brought in the special red crane behind us here specifically for the purpose of unloading and setting the substation today. That's a 180 ton crane and uh, is essential for carefully maneuvering such a large object in such close proximity to the building and other structures behind us. Each substation has a different location along the line. Generally, they're tucked under a bridge or somewhere where they're not, um, not out in the open. Try to keep them tucked away because they are rather large. And the four substations that are going in for this project will power this two mile route. So this is the first of four substations that's gonna bring power to the streetcar line. So the fact that we're now installing electrical systems, most of the overhead power system poles are in place, the majority of the wire has been strung. We're really hitting some significant milestones and um, good signs that the line is going to be ready. Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks for coming out today. I'm Terry Leeds, the uh, Director for Water Services for Kansas City, Missouri. And it's my pleasure to kick things off this morning. We're gonna have several people speak, and then we'll do a ribbon cutting cutting and then there will be a tour after that so um, our mission water services provide excellent water wastewater and stormwater services to ensure the health and safety of our customers while safeguarding our regional water resources for future generations as a part of that we broke ground on this 40 plus million dollar uh, expansion of our sanitary sewer system uh, since then we put in over 10 miles of, of sewer line and we've constructed two brand new uh, wastewater pump stations allowed us to take off eight interim pump stations. All of this allows for future to take place in the first and second creek watersheds or is now known by Twin Creeks. Um, several years ago when we started uh, trying to kick off what as Terry referred to as first and second creek which became the Twin Creeks project I was up on Platte Purchase Road with a landowner and an old farmer and I asked him I said hey are you going to be willing to donate easements for this uh, future sewer project that's going to go in and he said, heck, son, my dad gave uh, sewer easements back in the 60s for this project. I'd be more than glad to give them now to get this thing going. So uh, as you can see, this thing's come uh, from a long time ago to now uh, to fruition. And that uh, has come really because of the leadership uh, of the city and Mayor James and uh, Councilman Ford and Councilman Johnson at the time. And then a lot of uh, work with the uh, Northland Regional Chamber, uh, the Platte County EDC, and some of those groups that uh, have been really involved as, as well as uh, private business. We're standing here today at Benton House of Tiffany Springs. This is an eight and a half million dollar assisted living and memory care uh, facility that ties into the Quail Run branch, which actually runs on that tree line over there. And sewers themselves are not real sexy and you can't really see when these things are in the ground. But what you do see is buildings like this that are an immediate return on investment for the $40 million invested. So Hunt Midwest partnered with uh, Principal Senior Living several years ago to bring you know, assisted living and memory care to the, uh, to the Northland. We opened up a facility over in uh, the Shoal Creek area and then just recently opened this building, which allows uh, you know, grandparents uh, to stay close to their grandkids. It allows seniors to be close to their, uh, their retail and their doctors and that sort of thing. And that's, this is a directly a, you know, a result of the first and second creek going in. Um, it's kind of a funny term. We like to call this the first flush. This was the first building, new building, off of the uh, sanitary sewer lines. We also own 300 acres up on Platte Purchase at the southeast corner of Platte Purchase and Shoal Creek Parkway. Uh, that will also be a return on this investment. Uh, these sewers provide uh, sanitary sewer for that project. It's got 500 single family homes, uh, about 450 townhomes and 26 acres of neighborhood retail uh, and commercial. We're doing the first phase of engineering on that right now and expect to come out of the ground in 2016 with that project. Kansas City's Twin Creeks area is a blank slate of opportunity. As I mentioned, 14,000 acres to build uh, the new Kansas City, the next generation of suburban uh, Kansas City uh, that will be attractive for not only its re the 70 to 100,000 residents, but for the 500,000 residents of Kansas City and the 2.2 million residents of the metropolitan area. This is, and for that reason, this is a strategic investment. I want to thank the Kansas City Water Services Department, who found a way to get this done. When the council passed a resolution, I think they gave me 60 days to figure out a funding source. I apologize profusely to Councilman Ford and Councilman Johnson. I think it took me about 72 days uh, to come up with the funding mechanism, but thanks to Water Services, 
and our partners at Hunt Midwest and MD Management. We were able to put together a true public-private partnership to get the work done on time and on budget and, and open up this area for development. So uh, what you're seeing before you, again, is 14,000 acres of proof what it takes to make Kansas City a world-class city. So thank you very much. It's now my, my great pleasure and honor to introduce uh, Mayor Sly James. Now that's not growth that's going to happen overnight, and I know people like to see everything change in a flash of an eye, but it just won't be like that. This is a generational move. This is a long-term investment in the future of this city and in the future of the Northland. And that's how great cities get and stay great. They grow and they build on firm foundations, and this is the firm foundation that the Northland needs in order to accommodate that type of growth in the future. And we talk about bridges across the Missouri that made Kansas City a railroad town back in the 1850s, but just as important was the infrastructure that was in the terms of water pipes from the water treatment plant just on the north side of the river that ran downtown into the south side of the river and the city. So in a sense, this celebration today is like that. It's a major improvement that enables our entire city to grow and become a better place to play, work, and to raise families and enjoy life. And in order to do this, that means that we have to rely on a lot of people and we have to put in a lot of work. So I want to thank you all for joining us here today to celebrate the first step in making this a prosperous, uh, vibrant part of Kansas City. Y'all ready? Yeah, you tell us when there, Mr. Cameron. In one. Two, three. Yeah. Hey. All right. Congratulations. Bienvenidos a Fiesta Hispana. Be sure to check out all of the family fun, food, and fiesta at the 30th annual Fiesta Hispana at Barney Alice Plaza on Friday, September 11th through Sunday, September 13th. It kicks off Hispanic Heritage Month. Enjoy music, culture, and of course food at this celebration of Hispanic culture. Admission is free. For more information, visit kcfiestahispana.com. In observance of the upcoming Labor Day holiday, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Monday, September 7th. Also, curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day throughout the week. For example, if your regular trash day is Monday, your trash and recycling will be picked up on Tuesday, and then if your regular trash day is Friday, your items will be collected on Saturday. To view this program again or any other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search for Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.